Hello. Um, today we have 12 cars to unbox, um, ranging from X car toys and Hot Wheels main lines, um, all the way up to NO64 and a uh, Tomica limited vintage uh, with some stuff in between. Mini GT, Johnny Lightning, uh, Tarmac, Global 64. It's been a while since I've had a Global 64. I seem to keep winding up with Hobby 64s. Um, and uh, I like that middle ground that Global 64 occupies. But um, this is a car um, that I've opened before. I'm not sure if I opened it on the channel before um, or just privately, but it's been in my collection. But I thought that it would be interesting to to talk about it because I was I was reading a bit about it, and uh, and uh, I thought that it had sort of an interesting I thought that it had sort of an interesting story to it, um, or at least uh, if not story uh, background. So it's a Chinese taxi but it's an it's based on or an imitation of a, a Japanese subcompact car um, and uh, this X car model is nice it's got lensed headlights and very clear windows painted taillights and this fun taxi thing on top and uh, this is the delivery um, yeah so it's basically a uh, a knockoff car um, like this isn't the model of the the Japanese um, subcompact um, it's the model of the Chinese knockoff that was used commonly for these taxis. Um, and it was used for the taxis because um, it was it was the largest of that that other companies, the Japanese companies, subcompacts um, and had, you know, back seats, um, which is, you know, good if you're a taxi. And uh, it was very good on gas, um, so they could charge their customers less you know, giving them an edge um, over the competition who uh, mostly drove Citroens. I'm not sure which model of Citroen was was the common taxi in China at that time, but <laughs> anyway, so that's the story of this this little car. And, uh, and uh, I just think it's interesting that, uh, yeah, I mean, I know uh, uh, X Car Toys is a, is a Chinese company, um, so, I mean, it makes sense that they would, uh, they would put out, you know, just a, just a classic taxi, but, um, I found the, the story behind it fun. And, uh, also I really, I think it's a really, uh, it's really grown on me, um, this little taxi, so. I have this streetcar, well, streetcar, they're both streetcars. No, there's a race car. I have the non-taxi version as well. Um, I, don't, I don't care for it as much. Um, so I pulled out the other uh, X-Car toys uh, that I had to open that as well. The Suzuki Alto. Um, And this is a car I don't know anything about. Uh, and right away I love 
of the, the paint job and um, the details are really good. Oh, except the headlights in crooked. It's really interestingly asymmetrical though. Like the, the grills being on the right and and this being slightly on the right as well. That's interesting. Um, it's got like a almost spoiler, I guess, around the back window. I assume that says Suzuki on the left. It says Alto in English on the right. The, the back lights are also lensed. Um, seems to be uh, a higher quality model than the, the taxi. Less of a less of an obvious like toy feeling to it. Still rolls really nicely. Um, but I think the wheels might be... Yeah, I think the wheels are rubber. Um, and it's 164, so is the other one though, which is good. Yeah, that's a, that's a cool little car. Um, the asymmetry in it is, uh, is not something that you see very often in a vehicle. It's actually, it's actually a little smaller than the taxi. Um, yeah. That's aerodynamic though. <laughs> little small cars. Um, let's see, what next? Uh, okay, one more small car, and uh, then we can do a few Toyotas in a row. So, first Toyota is uh, this BM Creations. Um, I have one of these, uh, the Starlet. Um, I have one already, uh, and I really like it. And this is uh, another one in white. Bouncing around. Like it thinks it's Janet Jackson. Nineteen eighty eight Starlet. Turbo S EP seventy one left hand drive. I've never done any of these tire swaps. Um, you know, the cars sometimes come with replacement tires. Um, and these do seem much cooler. And um, so, you know, it comes with this. Comes with this white tire. Um, but then these alternate ones are cool chrome, um, but yeah, I guess that's a, that's going to be a bit of a process replacing them. Still, give me something to do at some point. Um, I've already taken a look at this car, so I know I like it, but we'll see how this one is put together. Turbo intercooler. It's kind of half-assed on the door handle. Again with the asymmetry of the uh, of the scoop or whatever that's called. The headlights look much nicer though on this one than on the, uh, the Suzuki. And it's got some kind of lensed um, maybe lights across the middle too. It says Starlet on it. Um, the grill looks good. Yeah, the back taillights look good. The defroster, 
There's a separate piece uh, for the wiper. I just, I just love the look of this car. Actually, it kind of combines the looks of, uh, of, of these two cars. It's got the, like, more... No, oh, maybe not. Maybe it's almost exactly the same as the Alto. <laughs> Different, different body shape, I guess, in the in the front end, but the asymmetrical scoop. Um, well, they're uh, clearly going for the same kind of market. Um, the Starlet uh, is a car that I like quite quite a bit, and. Uh, some more Toyotas. Okay, so this is number 307, and it's the uh, Supra D1 Grand Prix. Um, it's like a drag racing, not drag, um, drift car. It's a, like a drift car Supra. And then 30, number 308 is a Liberty Works Supra. So, I mean, these will be different, but based on the same underlying car, so that should be fun. So this is the Fat Five Racing. I wonder if they're a bodywork. They must be a bodywork uh, company because, I mean, look at these. Look at these shoulder wings. Sponsored by the Gran Turismo video game. Along with a number of other. It has the Mini GT rubber side view mirrors, which is nice. Rolls. Rolls nicely. Can't really see much interior. There is a lot going on here. The headlights look like they're different sizes. Like the... Or it looks like the paint came, I don't know. It's difficult to tell what's going on with this front end. Tail lights are great though. more detailed than Mini GT usually is on the bottom. Yeah, I mean, the bodywork is, is interesting, especially these. I feel like these are the like obvious standout feature of this, this body kit. Okay. Yeah, um, I find this car really um, boring, despite how much is going on. Uh, that's disappointing. Um, I mean, you know, I'm not the world's biggest. Let's zoom out a little. 
I'm not the world's biggest super fan, but uh, you know, I wanna. I know a lot of people are, and I wanna see if I can see what they see, but I don't think that's a very good example. Um, and maybe, you know, starting with uh, stock supers would have been smarter than these body kit ones, but I mean, Liberty Works isn't too like outlandish, so. I don't think they'll. Oh, the colors on this are. Um, I'm not sure what a polite way to say garish is. However, I immediately like this better. These headlights seem to be the same size. The grill's cool. You know what, the screen's actually kind of cool. The more I sit with it. I mean, it's different. It's not, um, like it's kind of cool with the yellow of the headlights and the yellow of the uh, this trim. Definitely a much more restrained um, body kit, and uh, I think it benefits from the from the spoiler as well. Um, rolls really nicely. Uh, I like this a lot better. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure what to say about it. Um, but I do, I do very much enjoy this green color now. <laughs> At first I was like, whoa, that's upsetting. <laughs> it's not the right word, but. Um, it was, uh, it's uh, definitely outlandish, but um, in a fun way. Whereas this, everything about this car, except maybe, except maybe those shoulder wings, just feels really generic. Like busy and generic at the same time, which is, I mean, yeah. Uh, let's look at. Um, Let's look at a Ford. So this is Global 64. Uh, so it's gonna roll as well. It'll be about the same as a Mini GT. And it's the Ford Mustang GT4 uh, and presentation model, I guess. Oops. no information at all on this car. Uh, well, it's got some heft to it. And, uh, 
very detailed interior. I mean, these windows are really hard to see through because they're such, like, basically slits. Um, but left-hand drive. Oh, it's got rubber side view, uh, side mirrors. I like the spoiler. It's got a very Ford um, front end, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of like the new Mustangs and stuff, which this is reminiscent of, but Oh, the taillights are nice. Um, reminiscent of, it is It is the new Mustang thing. It is, a, it's a Mustang GT4, so. Um, that was kind of a stupid thing for me to say. But that's okay, because I'm kind of a stupid guy who can't keep his hands straight, okay. Ford Aerodynamic, is that what that says? Ford Performance Parts. Those taillights are great, done really well. Uh, the spoiler is a nice, fun, curved forward shape. Uh, there's the roll cage and some kind of piping inside. Um, also something red on the floor there, where the other seat would be. Probably a fire extinguisher. And, uh, let's see. Let's see, uh, if she roll, oh, she rolls really nicely. Um, yeah. So I think this might be the first, unless I've got a Hot Wheels, um, one, but I think this might be the first GT4 car I've picked up. And um, I've been meaning to pick up some more. I like this. I, uh, I like the gray and the blue together. Is a really, um, it's very calming. Okay, so let's uh, let's pull out a bit and line these up. Next up, next up, let's do one of the high-end ones. Let's do the Inno 64. Uh, so it's a Skyline R32, but it's a Rocket Bunny Pandem body kit. And uh, it's a really interesting body kit. So what's this say? By WD Ultimate. And it just says Inno. Is that one pulled down a little? Well, I'll take a look at that later, I guess. I don't know if it'll just push back into place like a green light will. I mean, it should, it's rubber, right? But the, the depth is nice. I like the fact that the back is deeper than the front. That's a nice touch. I love the stance. I love how low it is. Um, I 
those headlights are flawless. Very good. I really like that. And um, there's some kind of insane bodywork around the door. That goes back over the... Um, Okay, so maybe it's these panels and the way that they're like welded on or, or like uh, riveted on, I guess. I don't know. In a really obvious way around the door. Um, oh, the taillights are nice. And I, that's like such a like small, uh, unobtrusive, uh, spoiler. I really like that. Rocket bunny. And big old muffler. Oh, and it gives the illusion of weaving through the under undercarriage. That's kind of cool. I love this because it's like it's like a, a almost a perfect rectangle with the you know the canopy on top but the canopy even is still boxy it looks like a, you know all all hard angles but like the car itself looks like I don't know a sled or something um, it's just it's it's just like a, a slightly pointed rectangle so so low to the ground too that's a right hand drive this is a this is such a cool car this is such a cool um thing to do to a, a skyline like the stance is so cool Yeah, it's just, um, I just don't think I've seen anything like it. Uh, and that's a, you know, I've, I've seen a lot, a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of skylines in, uh, in, in that die cast companies do. And, uh, it's, it's. it's nice to be surprised by one of them to like be like wow that's cool that's that's different and cool okay um i won't go on about that forever but uh, uh that's it that's a very exciting car let's put this away and Let's open the Hot Wheels next. So, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on these. Um, I just, I have a couple of these AE86s that I want to, uh, I should have opened them with the other Toyotas. Toyotas. I wish they had the front, the front detail. I mean, the back detail is great. There's nothing on top and there's nothing in the front. The other thing about this casting, which I, I really like this casting, um, and it's one of the ones that I collect, but I wish that, um, I kind of wish it was a lights down or that they did a lights down version.
easier. Okay, so this is a Falcon one in black. Um, and we have, so we have nothing on the, on the, the back or the front with this one, but we have the top. Um, yeah. I do like these uh, chrome rimmed tires for it though. Instead of these gray ones. I mean, the gray doesn't look bad with the white, and I don't think the chrome would have looked good with the white, but it does look good with the black. And, uh... Is there an interior? Yeah, there is. They're both right-hand drive. I don't think Hot Wheels changes that up either. Um, okay, so glad to have those. Um, there's still there's still a few of those that I, I don't have, but that's the fun of picking a car to collect. So the other Hot Wheels I wanted to open was this, uh, I mean it says Custom 71 El Camino, but really it's a It's not a fantasy El Camino, because I think that some fucking maniac actually built this car. Um, but it's definitely not a production car. It's basically got a rocket on the back of it, two rockets. I like that the, you know, it's got the back gate down. And they do some fun stuff with it here. Like they and they use blue for the window. And then uh, also use it for this um, hose looking thing. The gold chrome is really nice. The gold chrome interior. And then they've got the gold chrome wheels. And uh, yeah. So no, no detailing on the front, but, um, you know, black looks cool. And also, I mean, these headlights are interesting. One of them's, they're, they're, they're different. They're like asymmetrical, like different kinds of headlight on each side. Um, I'll have to look into that and see if that's what the what the car is like, 51. It's got some some gold details on the side along with sort of a burnt orange. Uh, I like the gold five spoke wheels. I think I'm, I'm gonna work great with this car. The colors on this car are really nice. Um, again, with the, the gray and the blue is such an appealing combo, the gold distracts from it, of course. Gray and gold looks nice as well, but gray and blue is, uh, yeah, not a combination that I guess I was aware that I liked so much. That's, it's an interesting car. Um, I mean, it's got a, a shit ton of bodywork done to it. It doesn't look like, uh, I mean, it's obviously it's got the, the truck bed, but Otherwise, it's, um, like if, if you had this, I would not guess that it was the, the El Camino. It's like, I don't know, it's jacked, jacked up. I mean, I guess the kind of person that's going to put a rocket on the back of their, on the back of their, uh, car is the kind of person that's going to jack it up. So this is uh, Johnny Lightning and uh, Barn Finds, um, replicating rusty and dusty relics with years of neglect. Um, and so what I didn't know is that these have a partner. Um, first of all, when I first got this, I couldn't find any other Barn Finds, but they've come up with a few more. Um, and 
each of them has a partner that's the car fixed up afterwards, like uh, the like pristine restored car. Um, so I've been trying to get my hand on the on the Dodge Charger one uh, that could, would go with this. Um, okay, so it's got some facts about this. Wow, that's jumping all over the place with the focus. Worth around 180 grand. One of the most valuable barn finds ever was a Bugatti Type 57C. The world's first supercar. It's like, fuck, where did I park my Bugatti? Did I leave it in the barn? Well, anyway. And then the guy gets hit by a bus or something. Oh, didn't look at the back. It's hard to see, so. It's got, um, again, a little, a little bit of a narrative about the car, which is fun. Uh, and then advertisements to follow them and join the Johnny Lightning Club. Unpleasant to the touch. Um, look at that, that line is insane. Uh, yeah, it's got an engine, some wires, I guess, around the side. Uh, it's, I mean, that clothes is really nice. It's got like a, I don't know, like a Mad Max grill thing on it. Um, the tires are in pristine condition. Not on the sides though. On the sides they're yellowed. Charger. Fixer upper. That's the light license plate. I think they just mirrored the damage, which is uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Um. This grill thing is strange, um, but maybe it'll be cool in chrome on the fixed car. This gap is, I mean, maybe that'll be fixed on the fixed up car too. Maybe it's, maybe it's a tactical choice. The gold spokes are, or the gold wheels are a, a strange choice too. Dirty windows. Uh, I mean, it's cool. It, it's deeply unpleasant to the touch. Um, and I feel like that whatever fake dirt that they put on it is like rubbing off on my fingers. Um, yeah, I mean, it'll look cool in a case, I think. I don't know. Maybe when I get the pairing for it. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that car. Uh, but. I also don't know how much of it is, just how unpleasant a tactile sensation it was. Okay, so last but not least, we've got a Tomica Limited Vintage 365 GTB4 Ferrari. It's got a little picture of it somewhere here. Yeah, it's got like, well, let's let's get it out of this plastic so we can see better. Okay, 
so now it's got a moving part. Which I don't think I've had a limited vintage that's had a moving part before. And here's the, the front on. So on the back, in the Ferrari official hologram thing. Uh, bunch of Tommy Tech. Don't eat it or it'll make you cry, I think is what that image. Target age 15 above. Damn. This is even more dangerous than usual. The prancing horse device. All associated logos. Prancing horse device. You learn something new every day. It's a very fancy box. Here's a information about the car. Uh, if you want to pause it and read it. And here we go. I mean, the first thing that leaps out at me is that interior. Oh, it's hard to see. The windows are super, super clear, but they're also reflective. I don't know if I can, you know, but that blocks out the light. There's detail on the steering wheel. You can see that it's got like a black out, like the circle's black, but inside is chrome, and then probably the Ferrari logo in the middle. Back end looks amazing. Ferrari. No door handles. Just those little dots. The bottom's not super detailed. The wheels look great. Just great. Just everything about this is done with care. And uh, the gold's a nice touch in the orange. I mean, it's not a super detailed engine. Um, opens really easily. And like, I might not even have guessed that there was an opening part. The lines are so good. And it's just, it's just a really nice silhouette. And it rolls really nice. This is, this is a really cool car. This is a really well done, really cool car. Wow. And it's, you know, it's much more subtle than the, than the F40 I've got that I love, that I love, by the way. But, um, yeah, this is, uh, this is cool in a more, um, subdued way. Not subdued, but. Oh, 
Okay, well, let's talk. Let's talk coolest cars for today. So, this Ferrari, which I've already forgotten the name of. It is... The Ferrari 365 GTB4. Okay, 365. This Skyline, the Rocket Bunny Pandem Skyline, so cool. Um, I'm gonna go with this X Cars taxi. Um, and, um,. You know what? Uh, I'm really, really happy with this uh, Mustang GT4. As well. Jesus, it's big compared to the others, eh? But they should all be to scale. The only one I would question is uh, the X-Car toys, which does say it's to scale. Mini GT is usually pretty good about actually being to scale. I know people have measured a lot of them. Um, I mean, really, I mean, these are great, but today's a day where the, the two expensive ones are actually the coolest ones, which isn't always the case um, and is often not the case. Uh, but this Ferrari and the blue, the blue is so good. Like in, in like red or that yellow, uh, I don't, I don't think it would look as good in black. It would probably look really good. Um, and in, in red, I guess, you know, you could get behind it, but like I said, I enjoy the, how subdued it is. And the blue goes with the, with the cream interior better than red would. Uh, with red, they'd probably give it a different interior. Um, just, just beautiful car. That's a beautiful car. And this is a really cool car and a, a nice surprise for Skyline. Okay, um, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I will see you again.